I'm John, your YouTube English teacher. In this lesson, we're going to study 18 phrasal verbs for restaurants. Number one, clean off. Excuse me, waiter, are there any free tables? One just became available. We're just cleaning it off. Oh, great. How long is the wait? Less than five minutes. Remember that a waiter is a man and a waitress is a woman. If you want to be neutral, you can say server, but it's less common. We just have to clean off the table. To remove dirt or a mess from a surface. After breakfast, she cleaned off the kitchen counter. He cleaned off his desk before starting his homework. Here, we use the word off because the mess is on a table, so they're cleaning off the surface. If, for example, you have a dirty room, you can use out instead of off. Clean the table off, clean the room out, etc. That's how we form phrasal verbs. Number two, set up. Excuse me, you said there's a five minute wait. Sorry, your table is almost ready. Please hurry up, we're starving. We're just setting up the table. It will be ready shortly. To be starving means to be very hungry. In some other languages, it means you're dying of hunger. It's similar in English, but it's not the same. Just very hungry. That empty feeling in your stomach. We're just setting up the table. To arrange or prepare something for use. The caterers set up the banquet hall beautifully. They set up a cozy dining spot outdoors. The word set is related to the word prepare. A good way to remember this is the settings app on your phone. That's where you prepare your phone to use. Number three, sit down. Your table is ready. Thank you so much. I can't wait to eat. I've heard great things about this place. Please sit down. Let me take your coat for you. Thank you very much. Remember, we often use the present perfect with the verb hear or heard. It's very common to say, I've heard something when talking about information. Please sit down. To take a seat. When they arrived, the hostess told them to sit down anywhere. Sit down, relax, and I'll make you a cup of tea. Another way to say sit down, especially when you're being formal or serving someone, is take a seat. A seat is just like a place to sit, a chair or something similar. Number four, look over. Have you had a chance to look over the menu yet? Just a moment. We're still deciding. Everything looks so good. Take your time. I'll come back in a few minutes to take your order. Thank you. We appreciate it. In American English, we can say, did you look over the menu yet? 
but this would be too casual in a restaurant. We can switch to the present perfect to sound more formal. Have you looked over the menu yet? Let's look over the specials before we decide. To examine or review something. She looked over the contract carefully before signing. Can you look over these numbers and see if they make sense? Remember that over is often the shape of an arc. If we look over something, it's like we're covering it with our eyes, which just means examine. Number five, fill up. How is everything over here? It's great so far. We're just a little thirsty. Someone will come by in just a little to fill up your glasses. Thank you so much. So far is an expression in English, which means until this point or until this moment. Come by is another phrasal verb here, which means come near the table in this context. Someone will come by to fill up your glass. To make something full. Would you like me to fill up your coffee cup? There are free refills on coffee. They filled up on appetizers before the main course arrived. You can fill up a glass, but you can also fill up your stomach or belly. In this case, we say fill up on something, and that something is food. I filled up on pizza last night while watching the movie. Number six. Write down. Are you ready to order yet? Yes, I'm ready. I'll have the chef's special. Excellent choice. Let me write that down for you. Anything else? Just that for now. Thank you. Sometimes, to be extra formal in English, we just add a lot of extra words. Waiters and waitresses do this in restaurants because they usually want big tips. So they'll say something like, let me write that down for you, which sounds like you're taking care of the customer. This type of language is extra friendly. Let me write down your order to make sure I get it right. To write something. She wrote down her recipe for me. Don't forget to write down your homework assignments. Write is a general verb, but when we add the word down, we're saying that we're writing it on something. In the context of a restaurant, servers write down orders on the paper that they carry with them. Number seven, whip up. Excuse me, waiter, my friend is arriving soon. He'd like to eat with us. That's not a problem. I'll grab an extra chair. Do you think the chef could whip up a burger real quick for him? Of course. I'll put in the order right away so you can eat together. Put in the order means to register the order, to give the order. Right away is a time expression which means as soon as possible, very quickly. The chef can whip up a burger in under 10 minutes. To quickly make a meal or dish. She whipped up some pancakes for breakfast. 
Can you whip up a salad to go with dinner? Whip is a verb that's a little hard to define with just an explanation, but just remember that it generally means something happens fast. It's often used with food, like in this case. Whip up a meal, whip up a dish. Make it fast, create it fast, cook it fast, prepare it fast. Number eight, dress up. Excuse me, waiter, I have a question about my salad. What's wrong? Well, the taste is kind of bland. Maybe we could dress it up a little more with some olive oil and vinegar. I'll notify the chef right away. Bland is a word that means food has no taste. It's very normal. There's no excitement when eating, no flavor. Let's dress up your salad with some other ingredients. To add extra ingredients to a salad. Adding lemon or citrus is a great way to dress up your salad. There are many types of dressing to dress up your salad. The light sauce that we add to a salad, like a vinaigrette, is called dressing. It's because we use it to dress the salad. We're adding layers to the salad just like a person. Up is optional here. We often use the normal verb dress to express this concept. Number nine, spice up. I'm not a huge fan of this meal. Could we fix it? Of course we can. The chef has many options. How about some cinnamon? Cinnamon would be perfect to spice it up. Fantastic. Let's fix it up for you. The word fantastic in English is not a way to talk about fantasy. It's a way to say that something is great. Adding some cinnamon would really spice up this dish. To add flavor or excitement to something. He decided to spice up the party with some lively music. To spice up the recipe, he added a bit of pepper. Spice up is actually not very common when talking about food. It's more often used to talk about making something exciting. Also, don't forget that word is recipe. The pronunciation is recipe. Many English learners make a lot of mistakes with that word. Recipe. Number 10, bring out. Where is our food? We've been waiting for almost an hour. Please don't worry, sir. It's coming soon. Thanks. We're really hungry. Oh, look, they're bringing it out now. Remember that if you use the structure, we've been waiting. It means that we are still waiting for our food. We started waiting in the past, and we're still waiting now. Look, they're bringing out our food right now. To carry something from inside a space to out of the space. They brought out a sample of desserts for us. The waiter brought out food for the whole table. We can combine many verbs of movement, like bring, with the preposition out. For example, the food came out. 
This is almost the same meaning, just expressed differently. We can also say they carried the food out instead of brought the food out. Number 11. Mix up. Excuse me, this isn't what I ordered. Oh, I apologize. Let me check for you. I think you mixed up my order with the table next to me, and I think they're eating my pasta right now. I'll check with the waiter. Give me one moment. Right now is another time expression that just makes the word now a little stronger. The word right adds more emphasis to the word now. The restaurant staff mixed up the customer's food. To confuse one thing with another. She mixed up the meeting times and arrived an hour early. I always mix up their names. They look so much alike. From this phrasal verb, you can create a phrasal noun. It was a mix-up. It was an error. It was a moment of confusion. A mix-up. Number 12. Send back. I don't think my steak is cooked enough. I can't eat it like this. I'm so sorry about that. Would you like me to send it back to the kitchen? Yes, please. It would make a huge difference. We'll fix it up for you right away. This is the second time we're seeing the phrasal verb fix something up. It just means fix. When we add the word up, in my opinion, this helps our language flow a little better. If a dish comes out and isn't how you want it, you can send it back. To send something to where it came from, to return it. The dress didn't fit, so she sent it back for a refund. They sent back the soup because it was cold. Back implies return in a lot of phrasal verbs. Send back, take back, bring back, walk back, and many other combinations. Number 13. Cool down. This soup is really hot. I can't eat it like this. Just wait a little while. It won't be so hot. If I blow on it, I can cool it down. I don't want to wait. It smells so good. You're right. It smells delicious. A little while is another time expression, and it means a short time. The verb blow on something means to use your mouth to create air. Let the soup cool down and you can eat it. To make something that is hot become cooler. After baking, let the cake cool down before icing it. They sat in the shade to cool down after playing tennis. Food can cool down or we can cool down. Remember, Cold is the opposite of hot. Cool is the opposite of warm. And the opposite of cool down is... Number 14. Warm up. We've been talking for such a long time. Can you believe my soup is cold? Oh, soup is always better when hot. You're right. Do you think you could warm it up for me? 
of course. I'll bring it back to the kitchen right now. Again, we have a phrasal verb with back. The waiter is going to bring the soup back to the kitchen. He's going to return it to the kitchen. Could you warm up my soup for me? To make cold food hot again. I'm going to warm up the leftovers for dinner tonight. The microwave is perfect for warming up yesterday's pizza. Cool down and warm up are verbs. Hot and cold are not used as verbs in English. When we say cool down, it's because the temperature goes down or decreases. We use warm up because the temperature goes up or increases. Number 15. Pack up. We couldn't finish everything, but it was so delicious. Would you like to take it with you? Sure. If you could bring us some boxes, we can pack it up. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'll be right back with everything you need. I'll be right back is a time expression which means I will return in a short moment. We can pack up the food if you bring some boxes. To put things into containers to take with you. They packed up the leftovers to enjoy the next day. At the end of the picnic, they packed up all their things. This is a situation where the phrasal verb is more common than the normal verb, pack. There's not really a good explanation, like a lot of phrasal verbs. But in my opinion, by using up, this makes the phrasal verb sound a little faster and more casual. Pack your food up. Let's go. Number 16. Cut off. This wine is so delicious. I'll have more, please. Sorry, sir. You've had enough for the night. We can't serve you any more. One bottle is too much? Since when? Sorry, but you're out of control. We have to cut you off. The phrase I'll have is probably the most common way to order something in a restaurant when talking to a server. If the server asks you, what would you like, you can respond with, I'll have, and then something. Remember the quick pronunciation for I will, but together, is all, just like the word for everything. All. I'll have something. We have to cut you off for the night. To stop providing or allowing something, typically alcohol in a bar. The bartender cut off people who had too much to drink. The power was cut off during the storm. The phrasal verb cut off is more common in a bar than a restaurant and is used when people have too much alcohol. Cut off generally means to interrupt something or someone. In this case, it's the supply of alcohol. Number 17. Close out. Excuse me, bartender? What's up? I'd like to close out my tab, please. Sure. What was your name? In America, 
When you go to a bar, you can open a tab. This just means that you leave your credit card with the bartender, and it's easy for them to keep serving you things without repeating the process. They'll always ask you, would you like to open a tab? This is a situation very unique to bars in America. I'd like to close out my tab, please. To finalize a transaction or an account. After the party, they closed out their tab at the bar. Excuse me, bartender. I'd like to close out my tab, please. Here, the word out doesn't have much logic. We're just closing our tab or an account. But we use close out. I personally think it makes our language flow better. We can also use close out accounts, for example, at a bank or something. Number 18, takeout. I'm still hungry. How about you? I could go for something small. Want to get takeout? We can take it home and watch a movie. Sure, I could do that. I could go for is a common expression which means I could do something. I could go for some more food. I could eat more food. Let's get takeout. I'm still hungry. Food taken from a restaurant to eat in a different place. They got takeout for the big game. Are you in the mood for takeout tonight? Takeout is usually not a phrasal verb. Instead, we make it a phrasal noun. I've seen this in other places, but it's usually take away. I believe that's British English because I've seen it a lot in Europe. But in the USA, we don't say take away, we say take out, and we usually say get takeout, just like get food. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, I have a free Telegram group that you can join for extra practice. Please like, share, and subscribe, and see you in the next lesson.